good afternoon. Uh, we heard a lot about the magical plant world above ground. So let's travel from this magical world above ground to the unseen life below ground. Productive and sustainable agriculture requires healthy soils. Soil health depends upon the unseen, vast and unseen life below ground. And it is this unseen life that has given us the life-saving antibiotics. Biota in soil is diverse. It's diverse both in terms of its size and in, some, in terms of its abundance. There are those that you can see with the naked eye, cute and curly. And there are those that actually you probably need a, a schoolroom microscope, nematodes and worms. But there are lots of them that actually are difficult to see with the naked eye and you require a powerful microscope. And these are to the size of one-tenth diameter of a human head. They may be small in size, but actually they make up in numbers. So in a teaspoonful of soil, you will have more microbes than all the human population on Earth. They are not only abundant, but they are multifunctional. So they are multifunctional in that they help plants overcome a variety of abiotic and biotic constraints and stresses. Too much water, too little water, too hot, too cold, too salty, too toxic, lack of nutrients, on the top of it, pathogens. Microbes help plants overcome and thrive in variety of these diverse environments. And this diverse, this multifunctionality comes from their diversity. So you all have family trees. But the family tree of microbes is quite complex. It is this complexity and diversity that gives power of microbes to be resilient and help plants under a variety of conditions. This is known as omics era. And this gave us, gives us power to unravel the biota black box and to see the genetic diversity in detail on who is they and what they do, how you can manage them. And it is this power that makes us to go forward. So if we know all of these things, so what is the problem? So the problem is the growing human population. And this is the world population today at lunchtime. To meet the food demands of the population in 2050, you need to double the food production that was there in 2000. We all know about green revolutions, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Green revolution has given us a boost in production. But the benefits in production from green revolution have plateaued now. There is actually a great uh, gap between what is attainable in today's, with today's technology to what is actually achieved in the field. So there's a 10 to 15 percent of yield gap. And the, the evidence is growing daily that this gap can be bridged by harnessing the diversity and functional capacity of microorganisms. So a term microbiome is used. Microbiome refers to a collection of microorganisms. It's actually a microbial community. So microbial community in an ecosystem. So these are looked as a community in an ecosystem. Like humans and microbes, plants and microbes also a close interaction. Like the gut for the humans, the roots and the soil surrounding the roots, rhizosphere, are the action points for this plant-microbe interaction. This plant-microbe interaction, the close association and the influence between each other can be influenced by management. Management can modify the community, the microbiome community in a soil, and plants can choose members of the community that are beneficial to them. By stimulating selective members of the community and by harboring selective members of the community. So through management, we can also 
make a better home for microbes. Thus giving plants a desirable microbiome. So there are three examples where this modification of plant microbe interactions can help plant grow. So one of the examples is nutrition. Nitrogen is a key element for all the plants. The global fertilizer industry is $100 billion annually. But availability of nitrogen, economic use of nitrogen fertilizer is a bottleneck for production, especially in developing countries. So can we reduce the amount of fertilizer used without reducing the yields? So this is where a plant microbe combination can come to the rescue. So there is a group of microbial community, as a known of diazotropes, that can perform this like nitrogen factories within the plant. And research in the Wake campus has shown that there is a diverse diazotroph community, even in Australian agricultural soils, that we consider are poor in fertility. And there are perennial grasses, which are, don't receive fertilizer all the time. They host microorganisms, these nitrogen-fixing microorganisms, in all parts of the plant. And they are fixing nitrogen-providing plants. So can we actually transfer this beneficial interaction to developing new crop varieties? Second example is health, plant health. Diseases caused by soil-borne pathogens cause 10 to 50 percent of the yield, up to half a billion dollars of yield losses from the diseases in main grain crops in Australia alone annually. And there are no chemical or resistant varieties available for farmers now. Once again, research at the Wade campus and in USA and Europe has recently identified that there is a phenomenon uh, based on microbial activity that reduces the ex uh, effect of the diseases or removes the effect of the diseases. So live and let live. And the omics tools have identified the community composition. And we are finding out that the, these disease suppressive communities have specific groups of bacteria and fungi enriched, giving, giving plants a better option to choose communities or members in a collaborative scenario. So the third example is lack of water. Climate change is one of the reasons why we are also seeing more of an irregular rainfall. And droughts and lack of rainfall are a major impediment to world's food production in many tropical areas. And research at the Wade campus in collaboration with researchers in India and research in Canada has shown that we probably could biofortify plants against droughts. So there are specific group of microbes that live within the plants, usually known as endophytes, that change the physiological and biochemical properties in the plant and help plants resist against the stress during the stress periods and revive once the optimal conditions arrive. So it is this omics error and the new lab knowledge has given us multiple ways that we can harness microbiome. Soon farmers will be able to get a microbiome report like the health report for us, which gives them probably options to choose for the upcoming season. Researchers could develop new crops and varieties with a specific plant microbe combinations for farmers to choose. Within a decade or two, I'm sure we will be able to immunize plants by having uh, innocuous compounds, non-toxic chemicals. So there are multiple ways that this new understanding of biology, microbiology, unseen world in the soil, can help improve productivity and reach the gap. So to me, in the later stage of my career, I say it's an exciting time for microbiologists. It's exciting times for biologists, students, to come into this field. This level of activity has only happened in 1860s. So let all of you explore these new options and help humankind. Thank you.